a renowned poet wrote these words. The universe is made of stories, not of atoms. Apologies to my late husband, the physicist, and anyone else who might take exception. However, our own universe is indeed created, crafted by, energized by our own stories. Brain science tells us that we are wired for storytelling. We understand and analyze and interpret life through narrative forms. As we seek meaning, we seek to understand what's going on in our lives, we process all the experience through our stories. They impact everything about our life. We process our past, we make sense of right now, we create and hold hope for the future, all through the meaning of our stories. There are important reasons for us to not only build our own stories, but to share them with one another. Sharing our stories connects us by illuminating our common ground, showing us that we are more alike than we are different. Stories inspire and embolden us. They empower not only ourselves, but others around us. We envision our dreams when we find the courage to act through the stories we tell about those dreams. Our stories help us to understand our feelings and interpret this world that we're sometimes stumbling through. We get to share our vision of who I am, who we are, the experience. We share our vision for the world through our stories. We discover who we are and try on new suits of clothing and so that we can craft who we choose to become. Years ago, in a corporate job, I had an opportunity to work with a leadership consultant. You know, they put you through a whole battery of tests, assessing your strengths and areas for growth opportunities. And in the follow-up conversation, <clears throat> this consultant was running sort of a bullet list of pieces of information that had been highlighted about who I am and how I operate. And one pertinent comment that this individual thought to take note of was about me, talks to process. And so that was worthy of comment, and I'm going, what, wait, doesn't everybody do that? Don't we all process by talking out loud or under our breath? When I was a child growing up, my father was always first up, sitting in the living room, having made his coffee, sitting there smoking his pipe and drinking his morning coffee. And I would tiptoe out from my bedroom because I knew he would be in his whatever it was, morning get ready for the day routine. And it often involved a little mental rehearsal and some of it might have slipped into an outside voice. There would be my father in his chair with pipe in his mouth, mumbling to himself. Didn't everybody do that? Well, in my family, we do. Our stories also have universal themes. What I might think is just deeply personal to me, nobody else can be stumbling through this experience. I might find somebody else has been in exactly the same place, that I have been struggling with the same questions, wondering the same outcomes, processing the same emotions. These universal themes, archetypes, one particularly captures our attention over and over, the hero's journey. Although I'm a little bit partial to the heroine's journey, just saying. The hero is called to some great cause, a problem to fix, a, a solution to find, and they out they go. They set out into the world to tackle this issue, 
And oh, what befalls the hero along the way? Trouble and turmoil and challenge and difficulty, seemingly insurmountable questions when it's a really good story. Think of Star Wars. Think of the Lord of the Rings. Think of Harry Potter. Not knowing if you have what it takes to meet the journey that you've been called to and yet you say yes to stepping forward. This can be every chapter of our life, the hero's journey. It begins, we're called, we step forward, sometimes stumbling. We move forward in, in spite of fear and difficulty. And we face into whatever is in front of us. Maybe it doesn't always feel like we're doing it successfully, but we step forward. And we often find that when we meet the challenge, when we are open to it, when we say yes, we recognize, we get to learn, we get to experience that yes, everything we needed to successfully complete that journey was always right here. Cinderella always had the ability to find the glass slipper. Dorothy always had the ability to find her way home. Luke knew how to face down his Darth Vader. Harry understood the magic of the world around him and in spite of fear, could tap into that deeper source and solve the problem at hand. Over and over, we step into our own hero's journey because each one is simply a chapter of our life. We begin, we meet the challenge, hopefully we triumph, at least we get to the end of the road. And it begins all over again, because each hero's journey is simply the current chapter. When one is stuck in an experience that feels unending, that feels insurmountable, that feels like you will be undone by it, when we can hold this idea, this is just this chapter, I will turn the page, there is an end to this story, it lifts you enough to take the next step forward. We are never meant to put up a tent in the midst of our problem, but to just keep moving forward. To open to the wisdom that exists right in front of us, use what we can, find the tools, the key that unlocks where we are in that moment so that we can keep moving forward. There's a line in a movie li that I like very much. It will all be okay in the end. If it's not okay, it ain't the end. And that can be, whew, that can let the light in, that can let the breeze flow through in the midst of the difficulty to say, there is more that comes after this chapter. There is more to my story than the place I am stuck in right now. This is just a wilderness experience. Words like dialysis and transplant, definitely a wilderness experience. And I just kept talking and commanding God to show me what was the next useful step. Where did I go from here? How did I see beyond this blinded place that I was in? Christ Jesus said it a little bit differently. He was talking with the disciples and they're asking him about the end of the coming age. And we know, metaphysically, that he wasn't talking about the 
end of the period of time they were in, but not the end of the world, but the end of a transition point from a world that was defined by human fears and limitations, con that human consciousness that, that can lock us into thinking that this is all there is. But he was talking about seeing a new world defined by that Christ mind, which is where he stood almost all of the time. Not stuck in his human self, but he could see beyond that. He knew the truth that was greater than the place he was experiencing in that moment. So from Matthew 24, verse 35, Jesus says to the disciples, Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words remain forever. This consciousness of knowing who and what he was and what he was about here in this life, while nothing about it ever probably looked easy, certainly not to the disciples who struggled every step of his journey with him, often themselves being the ones stuck in doubt and fear, while Jesus moved forward in confidence. But this was his advice. Heaven and earth, all that you know and don't know, all that is right here and all that is beyond, it eventually passes away. But hold to my words. Hold to what I've been teaching you. Hold to the creative energy that is God within you because that never goes anywhere. That remains forever. It is the anchor for your life. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words remain forever. This light that is the Christ energy at the center of our being is always there. We can have this sense that it dims we may even tell ourselves that God has gone somewhere where we are not. That is not a possibility. As Don said, reach into that space that is the presence of God. Know that that love is an eternal act, activity, energy, power, and anchor yourself in that place, especially when every anchor you thought you knew has disappeared. When we are living in our stories most effectively, it is both a head and a heart activity. We never really fully own something when it's only in our head. Before I moved to Hawaii and you know, for a while afterwards, I had yards of bookshelves. And just on one topic, my spiritual life, understanding God, I was sure the answer would be in the next book I picked up, and it often was. But I purchased way more books than I ever read. It never does us any good when the knowledge is only here, when the book stays on the shelf. We have to crack it open Find the juice, find the energy in the message, find the richness in the story of our own life, and get it centered here in our heart. When we are empowered by both our head knowledge and our heart deep inner knowing, then we see the stories of our life from that higher perspective. Through the lens of the Christ mind, through the gemstone facet that is the consciousness that Jesus spoke of. My words will never disappear because truth is permanent. Our lives change and what we call truth comes and goes, but the truth that is God never shifts. Never shifts. Command that truth to be active in your life, and you empower yourself to move through these chapters, through your next hero's journey, through the coming, whatever seems to be standing in your way. 
when we can hold on to that, we give ourselves power to understand the depth of our stories. Our stories empower us, embolden us, inspire us. What about those other stories? You know the ones. The ones that have a refrain of, I just can't get through this experience. I do not have it take what it takes to stand in strength in this moment, to accomplish what I'm called to live into. It's bigger than I am. I can't be healed from this serious illness. I can't resurrect my life from the ashes in which I find myself. We can choose to see any chapter, any story of our life from a perspective that takes away this power that is within us, that reduces us to the facts and the evidence we see around us. In fact, we, we will gather all the evidence that we need to tell us how things can't work, how we are not enough in the face of the circumstance. And yet we have the capacity to turn the page, to brighten up the light in the space and say, and what else is going on here? Yes, I may be feeling like I'm not enough, that I'm not strong enough, that the light has gone from my world, and what else is here? We can gather the evidence that, the, that life and the world is against us, or we can look for the evidence that even in the darkness, there is a flame of light. We can choose to see that energy of love as what's moving and active. And if we don't see it right now, we can say, I know it's there. This is the promise. This is the infinite energy of God, always here, always working for my favor. What if we trusted life is this universal conspiracy of love that everything, everything somehow contributes to our good? easy to find that when we like the experience, as Daily Word said, in our happy experiences, it's easy to find that truth. But when our back is against the wall, can we reach for it then? Can we find the anchor to hold on to? Can we be tethered to something greater than our fears? When we tell the story especially of the challenging moments, we have the power to use that to shape what happens next. Because how we see that story, that's what gives the next moment its power, its possibility, its infinite potential. So as we approach the stories of our lives, perhaps especially those that we find carry messages of limitation. Let's look clearly at the story of what's going on and seek to look at it with the awareness of the Christ mind. When I heard those words, dialysis, transplant, oxygen, my first response was, I'll just go home and close the door and pull the covers over my head. But in order to find the power in the story, I had to face into it clearly. I had to hear what was going on. I couldn't ignore what the doctor was telling me. I had to embrace that this was his knowledge, his experience. Now, what would I choose about that message? That's what gave me a fulcrum point of power in my life to shift into a different thought. I had to find an empowering idea of appreciation. Appreciation lifted me out of the place I wanted to wallow in. 
it gave me the ability to keep looking forward. I appreciated that I was in the midst of a medical circumstance and a medical team showed up to move me forward with all of their experience, skill, and wisdom. I was in appreciation that I heard what Myrtle Fillmore was saying in her writings, that I could hold on to that truth that there is more going on than the doctor's version of truth. And I could be grateful for a mind that had the ability to turn my attention away from the fear and the doubt, even if for a moment and say, I'm grateful for what will show up for me in this experience. I was compassionate with myself in those moments when all I wanted to do was wallow. And I began literally to visualize a new story. Not that my lungs had holes and they would never recover, but that I had the capacity of God energy in me to correct anything, anything. And so, as Myrtle did, I would talk to my kidneys and give appreciation to them for having got me to mm, this decade <laughs> and knowing that there was still function and life and activity there and it could be nurtured and raised and increased. Thank you, God, that is what happened. That I could visualize the lungs that weren't supposed to heal actually healing. I'm still working on a few of the other things that were the result. But my life came back. My energy was restored. Because I rewrote the story of illness and limitation and chose to write a story of how can this be different now? What do I choose as I step forward into the next chapter? I'm going to write this chapter of my life. My outcome was desired. I feel blessed that that outcome that I envisioned is one that took place. I've also had the experiences of life where I held all of those truths at the same fervent level. And yet my husband died on the floor of our home anyway. And I had to rebuild a life without a partner that I treasured. In those moments, my mind opened up a window that said, this experience this moment of seeing my husband struggle. This moment is a spiritual process. Don't hide from it. Step into it. I didn't always like that chapter. A lot. I didn't like that chapter. But I heard that voice and, and would hold on to it as I moved through my process of grieving, my process of rebuilding my life, my process of writing a different story. And then we anchor this story that we choose to tell ourselves, the greater truth, the one that's, that arises in our Christ mind that we create what happens next with, then we empower it by taking some authentic action that represents this change, this shift of direction that we are choosing, we take an action, wholly for ourselves, that says, sends an internal message, rewires our neural links to say, this is what I choose. This is the chapter I'm writing. This is the end of this piece of my story. When we take an authentic action, my visualizing the healing of my lungs, plus all the work I did in prayer of other kinds of meditation, of healthful eating, I worked through 
the fear of the unknown to get to the place of having a life story that for me is the triumph in my heroine's journey. Being aware, being in appreciation for this painful place you stand in right now, finding compassion for yourself when you can't always stand in that spot, using your creative powers of prayer, meditation, visualization, whatever else your wisdom guides you to, and then you choose the story that are your next steps. We can even heal the past in our stories by rewriting what we understand about what took place. And then we anchor it. We anchor our future by taking healing and authentic action. And it's not just our personal stories. The stories exist everywhere in our life, in our family, in our church, in our place of work. Wherever we are, we're writing a story. And that story has power. May it be in your life the power that is the love infinite potential and the wisdom that is the Christ mind within you. Take a breath with me into that space, please. And just hold yourself in that space of compassion for the journey that you are in right now. For the joyful chapters that have enriched and strengthened you. Thank you. For the painful chapters. Hmm. Just allow your heart energy to swell within your physical being and radiate this energy that is God's peace, God's love, God's harmony. Wherever you are, that light is always present. I have a rheostat in my mind, and I turn that light up to full power when I recognize that my story has turned to one of doubt or fear or pain. And I nurture that essence with compassion, letting that love energy soothe and comfort. Breathe into that space. See that light at the center of your heart and allow every breath to let it expand until you may see yourself in your inner vision encompassed entirely within golden light, bathing you, soothing you, restoring you. Our stories make us whole. Our stories allow us to rewrite our history and to shape our future. Thank you, God, for the illuminating light of your love. We rest in the silence and this love. <laughs>